Alors, si vous le, si vous le permettez, je vais commencer par donner le micro. Right, I'll start by giving the microphone to Martin Fenegou if he wants to take the floor at the end of the debates to give his feeling, maybe ask a question or make a declaration. First of all, thank you so much. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, conference. I would like to thank Dr. Mukwege, uh, especially regarding the uh, it gave rise to this mapping report, which was uh, hidden for years. There is a, a, a big problem. Look at, look at this uh, last picture. I'm surprised. The question is today, during the Cold War, President Mobutu was, for the United States, they used Mobutu, OK? And now we work about, we talk about, we're talking about globalization and uh, what's happening exactly in this world of, of globalization. I had the discussion with Mr. Marichaud from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Paris, etc. And I told them, I do not understand the situation. The DRC, my country, 90 million people, inhabitants, nine neighboring countries all around. And some of them don't speak French. They're not French-speaking uh, countries because Rwanda is an uh, English-speaking country. But anyway, we try to put an emphasis upon francophony, especially to Mrs. Oshi Kubabo, who is uh, uh, chairs the, uh, the, the, the organization Congo with its uh, land space with the neighboring countries. I wonder what's happening now today. Uh, I gave a conference, a lecture uh, last year in Harvard, at the Harvard University, with the president from Ghana. And I was surprised by what he said, because I, was, I thought French people would understand that, because he likes French-speaking countries. He's, we use the French language as our second language. Why? Because our neighboring countries speak French. And this is good for us. Now, I was wondering if France had a vision with uh, around Francophony, which country could be used for that in order to foster this feeling of Francophony? Why Paul Kagame? Because today in Congo, uh, there are lots of killings. For example, I spent the Christmas, I was on Christmas, I was in Beni, in, Beni, in Ituri, Ituri, Tanganyika. In, in the north and south Kivu areas, there are mass killings. Killings. Let me uh, give you just one figure regarding the Congolese um, uh, armed forces (FRDC). There are 300 Tutsi officers. I don't have problems with these with them. I, I play tennis with them. We are friends, and we are friends. Brothers, if you will, and I was uh, leading a specific uh, uh, association in Burundi. What's happening here regarding the public force? That, that was the name of the, the, the armed forces. There were no Tutsis. Regarding the Congolese National Army, there, was, there were no Tutsi officers. Regarding the armed forces in Zaire, the FAS, there was no Tutsi officer. And today we have 300 officers, more than 100 generals, including the generals that we saw on the presentation. What's happening at the present time? And this is chaotic. Everything is under control by Paul Gamgami because of the elections. The elections were held. And then what happened? Mr. Kagame decided what's going to happen in Congo. And he plays with everyone. Under his uh, aegis, the African Union said there was a statement. There, there are some serious doubts. This is a, a statement from the African Union. There are some doubts about the credibility of the, the, vo the, vo the, vo the ballots. So the Constitutional Court was not supposed to give the, the outcome. Uh, 
mission of heads of states, heads of governments was sent, for example, to find out a solution with the stakeholders. And then Kabila sent some people to Kadame, and then he hit the target. Other, others were targeted. So what's happening today is, is a chaotic situation, especially at the regional level. It's chaotic, a, a chaos. And the international arena would say, oh, we didn't say that, see that happening. For example, the, the, the rate of birth is so much important. Remember what happened in Paris? On February the 28th last week. You remember? At the Gare de Lyon, at the station, a lot was said about that. Nobody, nobody is in favor of violence, of course. But then, people then they are trapped. What happened here is what, what was to happen is supposed to happen in in Congo. Of course, the rule of law is so much important for us. The worst is the fact that I might be put in jail. They would not kill me, but in the absence of any dictatorship, things would have happened as what was uh, what happened last week. The French authorities, of course, don't want to learn the, le the to to draw the lessons from, the, from that. The media tried to revisit this aspect regarding what happened on uh, last week in Paris. So, what I say is that, of course, French people were courageous and brave enough to organize this uh, conference. But then, what's next? What's next? What should we do? What are we supposed to do next? The French Minister of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, Mr. Le Drian, said, OK, Marietta Fayoulou did win the elections, presidential elections. And then, a few days later, he told us about what was hap what happened in, in Congo. That was a compromise, African compromise. What, what's happening? Why don't we uh, Why don't we feel empowered? If we don't feel empowered today, in the future, in future, the situation will be chaotic around the Great Lakes. Kinshasa, in, in Kinshasa, there are 50, 17 million inhabitants. Congo, Brazzaville. As uh, 5 million inhabitants. Don't do you think that we will avoid any chaos in Angola, 30 million people? And that will be really chaotic. The same applies to Zambia, etc. Those young Congolese people today, they're not as we were, for example. They're unlike us. They're unlike us. We try to, to step back, but they will not step back because they have problems today and and of course uh, they, they, they they were raised in France but they will of course try to understand what's happening in Africa we have brothers and, and sisters over there in Rwanda in Burundi in Uganda Tanzania etc and of course we need to be clear about that if people want to make money okay why not but you can do it in another way and everyone will be happy about that because this is, it's a question of pillage of uh, natural resources in my country. But why? Why? As Charles Onana said before in his book, for example, and I believe that this is very serious. Whenever I go to the FNAC, the bookshop, to find out the book, you will see that the book is hidden at the bookshop. I went to the bookshop on Champs-Élysées called FNAC. I looked for the book, and they told me, there is no book. OK. I asked the assistant, and the assistant said, oh, no, sorry. There are only two books. I spent two hours, and then she found the book. And then she found three books after two hours. So I think that uh, a good support is necessary for Congo, in favor of Congo and the Great Lakes, because because they, that will lead to immigration, of course, because people will not be able to stay in, in Congo. This is what I wanted to say. It's a plot against uh, DRC. There is a plot against DRC, a plot that I call balkanization 
of Congo. And this is a very subtle nuance, but uh, sorry to say that. But Rwanda is going to build up an international airport, a hub that will cost $1.3 billion. Can you imagine $1.3 billion? In Rwanda, there are 12 million inhabitants. We have a, a hub in Nairobi, Addis Ababa, and in Lomé, and in South Africa, Johannesburg. Why, sh why an additional hub? In Rwanda, there is a refinery of coltan, but there is no coltan in, in, in Rwanda. They have a, a refinery, modern re refinery being built up for gold for southern Austra uh, Africa. Come on, be ser come on. This is not uh, serious. And look at that. This is a document which is extremely dangerous. This is the framework agreement for peace and security and cooperation for the uh, DRC and the region. These are our commitments, commitments for the uh, DRC. Commitments for the region, the, uh, commitments for the international arena, but nobody said anything about commitments for Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. And regarding this commitment for the region, this is, sounds strange. This is what uh, President Sarkozy said. He said, reinforce cooperation, regional cooperation, in addition to the uh, integration, economic integration with special attention to the query of the uh, exploitation of natural resources. What does it mean? What does it mean? Thank you so much for your attention.